And your final speaker is Rachel Everard from Rolls-Royce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me today. And, and please forgive me, I'm going to use some notes, mostly because I'm a little bit nervous about this audience. Um, <laughs> But, but I'm here to talk to you today about the, the role that air travel plays in our modern society, in bringing the world more open, closer together, and the steps that are already underway in the industry and are gathering pace to reduce the carbon impact of flying. And the fantastic opportunity that we think the UK has to really to do more and to really lead in this space. If, if at any point I mention a project or a, a idea that is, um, we want to talk about in more detail in the q and I'm really going to try and avoid technicalness uh, throughout this morning. So, um, But first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in a town called Netley. It's just outside Southampton. I don't know if anyone knows it. Um, it's on the banks of the Solent. And one of my earliest childhood memories was standing there and watching these huge cruise liners leave from Southampton Harbour and sitting there and thinking, wow, where are these people going? Who are they going to meet? What are they going to experience when they get there? Flash forward 20 years, and I've still never been on a cruise liner. I get seasick, and also the idea of being out at sea for days on end kind of fills me with dread. Um, but I have had the opportunity to travel the world, and flying has given me that opportunity. Thanks to Fly, I've had the opportunity to experience other cultures, to meet new people, to experience different climates in a way that has shaped me as a person. And I have no doubt that you will have similar experiences yourself. Flying is able to connect the world in a way that no other transport or technology can. Sure, it's 2020, we all have FaceTime in our back pockets, um, and we all, but we all know that's not the same as actually spending time with the people that you love. Personally, I have friends all over the UK, Europe and the world. My parents are now up in Aberdeenshire, my cousins are in the south of France, and I have friends in the US and work colleagues in China and Singapore. My parents, in particular, are 500 miles away from where I live and work. By the way, that's a 10-hour drive, an 8-hour train journey, or a 1-hour, 10-minute flight. Emails, phone calls, that family WhatsApp chat that we all have, they all play a really important role in our modern lives, but nothing beats that airport hug when you haven't seen your mum for six months. Excuse me, sorry. So flying has made the world today as we understand it, closer and smaller than ever. A little over 200 years ago, the Cutty Sark was lauded as a technological wonder for reaching from sailing from London to Australia in 72 days, about three months, with a favourable wind. The return crew would take six months to make that journey. Today, we can fly directly from London to Sydney in just seven, in just, sorry, 22 hours, 55 minutes, definitely not 72 days. Um, a feat that's only made possible by the efficiency of a modern jet engine. That hasn't come about through accident, it's come about through decades of innovation, engineering prowess and above all innovation. At Rolls-Royce, we invest £1.3 billion in R&D each year. We have over 20,000 engineers working on this challenge um, and we are the UK's leading patent filer, about 900 patents a year. And I'm really proud that Rolls-Royce and Britain remains a pioneer in this space. You've heard earlier today from Jim about how the aviation sector has successfully decoupled passenger growth from impact, meaning that while the total number of planes flying has gone up with rising demand, the impact that they have on the planet has not increased at the same rate. For nearly three decades, the British-made Rolls-Royce family of jet engines has pushed the boundaries of what is possible. And as Owen said, reducing overall CO2 emissions from, from the jet engine by about 75%. And each new model of engine is setting a new performance benchmark for the whole aviation industry. Flying today is quieter and cleaner than it has ever been. And the UK is right at the forefront of making that happen. At Rolls-Royce, we're proud to call the world's most efficient aero engine flying today, the Trent XWB, one of our own. The brains of that engine are made just outside this city in Solihull and the engine itself is designed and built just up the road, 40 miles away in Derby. And it's because of the efficiency gains that we have made with engines like the Trent XWB that flying is more affordable and more accessible than ever. As Sally showed, it's no longer an opportunity that's only reserved for the rich and famous. But that is not enough. We must go far further and we must go faster. You may have heard in the news that earlier this week the UK aviation industry launched a joint initiative to reach net zero emissions from UK air travel by 2050. This aligns with the UK's net zero target that we're here to discuss today, 
But more importantly, it aligns with the consensus of the scientific community that we must reduce global emissions to curb the worst impacts of climate change. What this roadmap begins to show is that the industry does think it is possible for people to fly, but also tackle climate change. At Rolls-Royce, we believe that that can be achieved by pioneering innovation on three fronts. Firstly, continuing to evolve jet engine technology. In Derby, we're working on a new engine built on the Trent XWB that we call the Ultrafan, that will deliver yet another step change in environmental performance, reducing emissions by 25% compared to the modern jet engine flying today. Secondly, we're working in partnership with the fuels industry to accelerate the availability of sustainable lower carbon fuels. The technology to produce non-fossil fuel-based fuels exists today, but as Owen said, they're not available in the quantities that we need, far from it. But these fuels can reduce, reduce the CO2 impact about 90% compared to a conventional jet fuel. And importantly, our engines are already available to fly on them today. It's simply a case of making sure the fuels are available. And believe me, we are pushing to make that happen. And thirdly, we are pioneering a third era of, of aviation, more electric flight. Electrification will play a crucial role in dramatically reducing the carbon footprint of small and regional aircraft routes. The work we're doing right now, I firmly believe, will see me visiting my mum on a completely different aircraft within the next 10 years. And while we are starting small, we're thinking big. Later this year, Rolls-Royce will attempt to break the world speed record with a, for a fully electric, zero emission aircraft through a project that we call Excel. The plane we're building in Gloucestershire will reach speeds of over 300 miles per hour and have a range of around 200 nautical miles. And that's a fun project, it is, but what's most important about it is we are developing the world's most powerful battery that will ever take to the skies through this project. We're also working with partners in Scandinavia and the UK on hybrid electric island hopping aircraft and with colleagues in airplane manufacturers like Airbus on larger hybrid electric passenger jet planes that will fly next year. Just last week, I was in northern Norway and I saw firsthand how flight brings together communities, particularly the remote communities on the North Norwegian coast. This small plane behind me here provides a vital connection for people. It helps them to get to hospital appointments, helps them to commute to work and lets them visit family and friends. It allows ordinary people to hop over a fjord in just 20 minutes rather than the hours it would take to get round there by boat. And we're working right now with this regional aircraft, airline sorry, to, that operates these services to replace the plane that you see here today and the 30 others in their fleet with a fully electric or an electric version by the end of this decade. All of this is possible because the UK has a long-standing history of fostering innovation and pioneering new technologies in flight. And in fact, it's the UK government that's backing us on the majority of our electrical projects. We have a real opportunity in this country to reap the benefits of making aviation more sustainable, creating high-tech, high-skilled jobs while leading the world to a lower carbon future. And it's now more important than ever that Britain harnesses the potential of flight. We are, after all, an island. No wonder that we are the highest user of international flights. Um, and the connections that this country will need with new trading partners, and friends who are going to be further away than the other side of the English Channel. Decarbonising aviation is not going to be cheap. It's why companies like Rolls-Royce and others in the sector need to be able to continue to invest in technology <coughs> solutions. It's not going to be easy. There's not one single solution to low-carbon air travel. It will take a combination of improved engine and aircraft efficiencies, new technologies and designs, changes to infrastructure including actions at airports and in route planning, and sustainable fuels to get us there. But ultimately, the UK cannot go it alone. We are, by our very nature, an international business, and we need to persuade and cajole the rest of the world to move with us. But at Rolls-Royce, we are very clear that we believe that there is a pathway for net zero aviation emissions by 2050, and we want to lead the world to get there. People fly for the experiences that they get when they step off that plane and into a different society, culture, even climate than they used to. I, mean, I want to get on a plane today. And I have no doubt that every time I've stepped on a plane personally, I've benefited and learnt from the experience, even from that girls' holiday the summer I left school. We need to be very clear that it's not flying itself that is the enemy here. It is, in fact, the very backbone of modern inclusive society. Flying has enabled people on average incomes to explore the world in ways that only the richest could when my grandparents were born. Carbon dioxide, particularly from fossil fuels, is the enemy, and that is the environmental and climate impact created by flying that must change. 
At Rolls-Royce, we believe that aviation can be compatible with a net zero world and that that can be achieved, to, can be tackled head on rather than through market-based measures and achieved through innovation and technological advancement. And we owe it to ourselves and the future generations that may stand on the banks of the Solent and wonder at the world out there to make sure that is compatible. Thank you. So, thank you, Rachel.